Hi y'all, in today's video, I am going to be answering questions about being a homeschooling mama. So stay tuned. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dina and I'm a homeschooling mom of five kiddos, four and under. Nope, that's not right anymore. That was, that's old information. I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, six and under. And on my channel, I talk about everything homeschooling and motherhood. So if you're interested in those topics, then don't forget to subscribe down below. And when you subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. I share a lot of what goes on in our daily lives, so check me out there. Today's video is a homeschool mom tag, and it is hosted by Tiffany over at Five Peas in a Rod Pod, which is the cutest channel name, I just have to say. And so I will link her channel below. She has a lot of great content, so go make sure to check out her video along with all of the other mamas that are involved in this tag. And if you're interested in answering some of these questions yourself, then include your video in the playlist below and tag some of your favorite mama friends here on YouTube. I would like to tag Jess from Prayers in Ponytails and Deanna from Called to Cultivate. So tag you guys and I love both of these mamas and if they decide to do their own videos answering these questions then I'm sure that you will love them too. Okay, it is a rainy and cold day here in South Carolina, and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to film this video in my comfy clothes with a cup of coffee and my blanket and my slippers and all my kiddos napping. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump right in here. Let's see, the first question is, how long have you been homeschooling? And we have been homeschooling <laughs> since my oldest, which that was my oldest, Abigail. Um, she was, she were about three. She was about to be four in October, and I just decided to go ahead and start the journey, our journey of homeschooling. So that was in the fall of 2017. So I guess we've been homeschooling for about two and a half years now, but we did start out with really early preschool. Question number two, how many children are you homeschooling? I am currently homeschooling three out of my five kids. My kids' ages are six, five, three, two, and then my three-month-old. Oh, no, my four-month-old. Oh, she's getting so big. But I am, ho I am homeschooling my six-year-old, five-year-old, and three-year-old. And they are in first grade, kindergarten, and early preschool. Number three, when did you know you wanted to homeschool? Homeschooling was never something that I wanted to do growing up. Um, I went to a private school. My husband was homeschooled for a little bit, but he mostly went to, he went to private school and went to public school. So it wasn't something that we necessarily even talked about when we first got married. But when we had our first baby, then I don't know, just God placed it on our hearts. And it was something that we wanted to do, gosh, when she was, one year old or something like that. Um, we just knew from then on we were probably going to homeschooler. Number four, what was your spouse's reaction and are they supportive? When I first brought up homeschooling to David, he was a little bit hesitant. Hesitant. I wouldn't say he was not supportive, but you know, he just have questions. Are they going to get a good education? You know, are the whole socialization question, you know, and then honestly, a little bit concerned about whether they'd be weird homeschoolers, <laughs> but it didn't take very long for him to come around to the idea. And I would say that we made the decision together to homeschool. And so, yes, he is very supportive. Number five, how do you make sure you and your spouse share the same vision for your homeschooling journey? Well, our vision for our children and how to teach our children is the same in that we want to teach them in the ways of the Lord. So education comes secondary to any of that. And so I would say um, as far as our vision 
for teaching our children in the Lord is the same and we are constantly talking about things like that. Um, but as far as homeschooling goes, like what curriculum to buy or any details like that, he really does trust me and um, lets me decide on what to use and how to teach them and what needs to be taught when. So as far as vision for our homeschooling, um, he really does leave that up to me. But as far as teaching our kids the ways of the Lord and you know just life things, then we share that together. I don't know if that answered the question. I hope it did. If it didn't, ask me to clarify in the comments below. Okay, number six. Have you had mentors help you along the way? Well, when I first started homeschooling, I, I actually didn't know anyone who was homeschooling. And so what I did is I just researched YouTube. So YouTube homeschooling channels have kind of really taught me how to homeschool. And that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to start my channel is because I wanted to encourage other mamas and encourage um, mamas who are just, and daddies, who are just starting to homeschool. And I wanted to show them that it is definitely possible, even if you don't have any teaching background or anything like that, and not necessarily like become a mentor to them, but just an encouragement along this homeschool journey. Number seven, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received about homeschooling? One of the best pieces of advice regarding homeschooling was to read the book by Sarah McKenzie, Teaching from Rest. And it is a great read. If you have not read that book, I highly recommend it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Audible. That's how I read it. And you can actually hear Sarah McKenzie herself reading it. Um, and it is just such a great book. I highly recommend reading it even every year, like right before you start homeschooling, maybe a few times a year, just as a reminder to just focus on why you're homeschooling and how you're shaping little minds and little hearts and how not to do that from a place of stress or being overwhelmed because you're trying to reach certain goals, but to do it from a place of rest and realizing that your kids are learning every day and that education can be fun and it could be life. So I highly recommend that book. And there's a lot of good advice that comes with that book. Number eight, what is the best piece of advice you can give to someone just starting out? Um, I would say, and this is a quote that I got from Teaching From Rest, but one of my favorite quotes from that book is, who's well done are you working for? And ultimately we are working for that day when the Lord tells us, well done, good and faithful servant. So just keep your focus on him and how he wants you to teach your kids, how he wants you to homeschool, and yes, even what curriculum he wants you to use and what structure in the day, what routine works well so that you aren't too focused on getting things done and more focused on cultivating not only a love for learning but a love for him so the best advice i can give you is to focus on him first and everything else will fall into place number nine what is the most difficult aspect of homeschooling um homeschooling with my kids is all that i really know so i don't really know anything different but i would say probably one of the most difficult aspects is homeschooling multiple kids at one time, especially when they're little. Like I said, we've got five kids, six years and under. And so we've got a lot of little babies running around. And so it gets a little bit chaotic and it's hard for one person to focus when everybody else is running around around them. Um, so that can be a little bit difficult, but there are ways to go around that. And if you check out my homeschool routine video, I'll leave it in the cards above. I think that's the right side. Then you'll see how I keep the other little ones busy while I'm doing homeschool with the older ones. Number 10, what do you find the most rewarding? And I would have to say probably the most rewarding thing is when you see something finally click in your child. Um, so say like when they finally learn how to read, you know, and it just clicks or when they just put connections together, you know, whether it's science or history or different things like that and their eyes light up and they get super excited because they remember that from somewhere else. And I just love those little moments. If they went to school outside of the home, then I wouldn't be able to see that. So I think being able to see the light in their eyes when something clicks is super rewarding. Number 11, do you make time for yourself 
what do you do to practice self-care? Um, I do make time for myself. Obviously, my kids are napping right now. But the biggest thing that I do as far as self-care is that I wake up early so that way I could spend time with the Lord. And that time for me is so important. And I know that if I didn't have that time with him, that the rest of the day would just fall apart. And I'm not saying that the rest of the day is perfect every day when I do spend time with him. I mean, I have my moments where, you know, I lose my temper or I'm just too tired to do anything. Um, but putting him first in my life and making him a priority first thing in the day is definitely self-care for me because I know that if I don't get that first thing in the morning, that it's not going to happen later on during the day. You know, the, even during nap time, you know, I have other things pressing that need to get done, but, or, or I'm just so tired during the nap time and I don't want to give God my leftovers. And so I decided a while ago that I was going to wake up early and oh my goodness, I am not a morning person, you guys. So please hear my heart on this. I please don't hear that I am like this super amazing person because I really am not. It is only by his strength that I can even wake up. And it was his idea it was not mine. <laughs> and I fought for a long time to keep my sleep. But the more that I fell in love with him, the more I just wanted to spend that time with him. And so waking up in the morning is not a chore for me anymore. It's it's something that I look forward to every day to just spend that uninterrupted quiet time with him. And now we do have little kids, so every once in a while it does get interrupted and that's okay. I will just have them watch a little bit of TV or read a book or something while I finish up my time with the Lord. And that that's okay if they have to do that because my priority is Christ. And if they see that, then I'm living by example. And so that's my first and foremost self-care. Another way that I kind of take care of myself a little bit is that we do still have nap time. Obviously, my kids are asleep right now. My oldest is not. You can probably hear her kind of plane walking around in the background over here but we do have quiet time where she'll go and she'll read a book right or she'll go and play by herself for a little bit while the other ones are falling asleep and then she'll take a book and go lay down on her bed once everybody is asleep so i do get about about two hours ish during the day where i can just relax and um, do what i need to do uh, whether it's fold clothes or film a youtube video or really do anything that i want to <laughs> and last but not least, do you have a Bible verse for your homeschool? And we do. It's 3 John 1, 4. And it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. And that goes back to what is my focus for my homeschool? So yes, I want to educate them. Yes, I want them to be able to be good citizens in our community. But first and foremost, I want them to walk in truth and I want them to love the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind. And so when I begin to get frustrated during the day or impatient with the kids, then I need to remember that I am discipling these kids also. And it is more important to me that they walk in truth and that they love the Lord than for them to finish this school assignment. All right, you guys. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon so that way you know whenever new videos pop up. I will link the playlist for this tag down in the description below and up here in the card so that way you can go check it out. And thank you again to Tiffany from Five Peas in a Rod Pod for hosting this. Make sure to check out her channel as well. Leave me a comment below if you'd like to answer one or two of these questions. I'd love to hear from you guys. And also in the description down below, check out some other videos on my channel that you might be interested in. Okay, well, I hope you're having a blessed day, you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> well, welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dita, and... What did, did I say Dita? Yes. <laughs> it's not like Dita. <laughs> what is my name? Dita. I need some more coffee right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> the alligator one. <laughs> <laughs>